Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and in a previous episode we have found a pinout for my old tailor type. And in this episode we're going to decode the serial protocol, make it talk to an Arduino and hopefully also over USB. So we're going from USB to really old tailor type. So this is the teletype that you've seen in the previous episode where we found the pinout for this machine. It's about 60 years old and it doesn't use the common serial protocols that we know from computers today like RS-232. Oh wait, that's also pretty ancient to you guys maybe. Uh, so it doesn't use USB or something like that. Um, it uses not even ASCII characters the 8-bit encoding of letters and numbers that we are used in computers today. It uses 5-bit Bordeaux code. I'm not sure which variant of that this particular machine uses because it's like old, it's the military variant and it's 75 baud instead of the usual 50 baud. So we have to make some custom hardware for it and some software that translates from a normal USB protocol to whatever this thing uses. So when I found the pinout for this machine by basically trial and error and probing with an oscilloscope and a multimeter, I found that there is a contact that basically opens a circuit that allows us to engage a relay or some sort of relay predecessor. Basically it's like a solenoid that is held up and when we uh, make that voltage go down, <laughs> then it engages. And that basically in a serial fashion, like one bit after the other, encodes the message that we send, or basically a character, and that is what the machine then prints, and it's transferred mechanically throughout the whole machine. By probing I also found that the punch tape reader does not use those electrical contacts, it transmits its message purely mechanically. And also the punch tape maker, or the puncher, punch tape puncher, on the other side, that also works purely mechanically. And when I type on the keyboard, I can actually see the encoding in the mechanics. But it's like the other way around with like the least significant bits flipped. And yeah, that got me thinking, sure, this is a standard protocol. Uh, yeah, to interface with that device, we in any case need to make some custom hardware. In the last episode, we have learned that this machine runs on 220 to 240 volts AC and it also uses pretty high AC and DC voltages internally. So I would like to steal the voltage needed to power my custom hardware directly from the device. So I will probably make some sort of AC-DC converter to get the 6 volt rail that is used on the light bulb usable for my application. That would be interesting if I can make that happen pretty straightforward. And I would also like uh, to avoid any real contact between my circuitry and the circuitry or the little bit of electronics that is in this teletype because it's mostly mechanical. So to keep that isolated, I will use relays and not MOSFETs or any other stuff that would have a common connection. I think I'm going with microcontrollers that I already am familiar with. Let's take a look at what I came up with hardware-wise. Welcome to my computer. As always, we go in-depth about all the details of the schematic and the code on the Element 14 community. And in this main video, we have like the main points. So if you want to go more in-depth with that topic, check out the video page on Element 14. Because of the prevalent component shortage, I've used multiple footprints in my design and different microcontrollers to be able to use whatever I can get in time. So if one is sold out, I can use the other. And because I happen to have from the Glory Arduino Uno days some LTD Mega 328Ps still in stock, I have also incorporated that into my project and if I can't get the AT Tiny to work or can't get a chip in time, I just can fall back on that trusty old microcontroller that we all know and love. For the power distribution, I have chosen three footprints of common 
uh, voltage regulators that I will probably get at least one of them. <laughs> So I can basically pick and choose the one that I happen to have in stock at the right time. That is development hardware and development hardware should be flexible. It should give you all the points to probe and different ways of attaching whatever you try to interface. That is why I have also broken out the normally open and normally closed positions on the relay just to be sure that I don't have the wrong one broken out. One thing about this design that really grinds my gears is I have taken so much care into making sure that I don't cross over the RX and TX lines and I've like meticulously followed reference designs and turns out it was incorrect. RX and TX are swapped. So I have to make a little bodge and to actually do that bodge, I removed the 80 tiny 1614 that didn't boot up for some weird reason, I don't know. So I'm falling back on the 80 mega 328P, use the pads of the 80 tiny to swap over those RX and TX connections to get USB to transmit from the USB port to my microcontroller. And then we can move onwards with the code. So code as in code that we actually program and code that the machine uses to encode its bits and bobs and digits. So this machine seems to use 75 baud, 5-bit Bordeaux baud code that's more closely related to Morse code than it is to ASCII, for example. It uses 5 bits, so 5 ones or zeros, to encode a digit. And then it uses something to tell the machine where that bit stops and where it starts, or that character stops and starts. So it has a start bit, then the five bits of data, and then a stop bit. And it took me ages of trial and error to figure out how long these should be, because all the references I got online, like they were all mostly congruent, but when I tried them out, nothing worked. I put in the code for an A and it prints an A. I put in the code for an O and it prints an M. And then I put in something else and it always prints a V. Why? From just math, I knew that the baud rate is one second divided by that baud rate. And that should give me the delay in milliseconds between each of these poses. So one over 50 would give 20 and one over 75 would give me 13. So I would have a delay of 13 microseconds for each bit and then double that for the stop bit because it basically uses two stop bits at the end. One to say this is a character, five bits which character it is and then two bits to say this is the end of the character and then the next one starts. And it always gave me wrong results. It took a week of trial and error to figure out what is actually wrong. For timing reasons, we always have to leave out a bit of the code if you want to see the full version and view it directly, download it and modify it. Go to our website linked below and there you find all the code and bonus stuff that we put on regarding this project. And also leave your ideas on there as what we can do next with this thing. I would kind of want to make it into the control system and the input output system for a homebrew computer, maybe? Hi, I'm David from Element 14 to the Electronics Inside. Join me as I tear down toys, tools, appliances, modern, vintage, classics, and even some new releases just to find out what's inside. So if I have set all the delays and the start and the stop bits right, why is it not printing what I intend to do? And the answer is, as I have discovered in the previous episode where I found out the pinout, this machine was never used on a telegraph line. It was only used locally. And then I found a little hint in some pretty old forum that deals with teletypes. And they said, usually when you buy a teletype, then somebody from the post office comes in, installs it, sets its address, and it tunes the machine 
to that baud rate. And I thought that was just setting that baud rate. And apparently you can do that by exchanging some gears in it, but also because every gear, everything in the world has slop. Yes, engineers, you are always calculating with perfect straight things, but in reality, everything is crooked. And so also the gears in this mechanical marvel have slop. It's tiny, but it's there. And to make that baud rate really precise, you have to tune it. And there is a little indicator that lets you set the timing forward or backwards a bit. And nobody ever tuned that machine because it was never ever used on a telegraph line. So what I had to do was to tune it. How? Okay, I've researched this a bit. How do you tune the mechanical frequency of a mechanical device to a specific baud rate? Uh, basically, you do it like with a motor, a motor, like a combustion engine. Then you have to time all the injection cycles and all the stuff that goes around it. It's all timed and you have to make that timing precise. And they do that with a stroboscope lamp. So it gives them the right flicker, which indicates the right RPM, and then the timing will be right. And that is how they do it on teletypes. They used stroboscope lamps for that, purpose-built ones. I don't have one. But what I have is patience and the will to get this thing working. So I basically spent the week inching my way forward and backwards by always trying to transmit single letters that I can predict, see how the outcome is not what I wanted, do little adjustments until the outcome got better. It still wasn't what I wanted, but it was like always the same error. This should now be an A. And it's an M. And at that time, I had no clue if my baud rate settings were even correct. So I also made a script that iterated over all the delays from 10 milliseconds up to 25. So on every iteration, it would change that. And what I did is basically I let that run through. And while it's running, I was constantly after every cycle adapting that uh, baud rate compensation thing. And finally, I managed to get A, B, C, D, E, F, G and the rest of the alphabet where I wanted it to be. Or basically first I got A, B, C, D, E and when I got that I tried the whole alphabet to like I shortened it to make sure I won't spend a year doing this. And when it finally was done I could print my first full alphabet when I wanted it to print an alphabet in the right order and on my command. The rest is basically playing around with programming. I have made a little interface to my device, like I run some wires. I've just used some uh, standard electrical wiring to get that to the back where there is already a hole. I think that is the place where the original telegraph cord uh, was connected. And it interestingly enough has already M3 cuttings in the holes. So I basically I 3D printed the plate and put in a four pin aviation connector. And that allows me to interact with the relays on the input and output side. So now I can connect my development hardware just with a plug, have the unit completely closed up and we can demonstrate it and try it out. For the sake of getting this thing ready in time, I've just uh, implemented the alphabets, the English alphabet and not any uh, special characters for now. That will follow later when we actually think about how to use this stuff productively, not just as a USB printer.
We have successfully made my teletype type with some custom hardware, development hardware, as you can see. And we haven't set all the goals that I tried to implement at once in here, but that is what development hardware is for. Next iteration, more improvement. Do you have any experiences with reverse engineering serial protocols? How would you go about that? I'm sure there are much better solutions than the crude way I did it. But we made it so it can print a full alphabet. The logical step would be to make that hardware a bit neater and nicer and implement the full character set and then we uh, search for some applications. Uh, but do you have better ideas? What can we use this teletype as an input and output for? Maybe some homebrew computer stuff? Leave your ideas at the Element 14 community. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me.